Awesome, thank you. Um, so my name is Paula Gunter, and I work at 53, and amongst other things, I will tell you about the name of our company. Um, I'm super honored and excited to be here tonight. Thanks for um, hanging out until the last act. I'm gonna talk a little bit today about uh, our process at 53 and our process of how we made Mix, which is a platform, a collaborative platform that we launched back in September. A little bit about uh, 53, we're a small startup in New York and Seattle. We're about 40 people. And unlike uh, Manuel and Kim's design groups, we actually have a one-to-one -one design engineer ratio, which doesn't make it any easier, um, but it makes for a very interesting mix. And of course, we also wear a lot of hats because we don't have product people um, or all the other types of things you might need in a, in a team. So 53, um, we're a company that builds tools for creation and most of your important tools for creation can be found within an arm's reach and an arm's reach is 53 centimeters. Yes, we use centimeters, our CEO is German, I'm Canadian, so it all works out. Um, but that's the hypotenuse of your, your arm's reach in centimeters. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about our products, paper, it's a simple tool to draw on an iPad uh, with a very expressive ink engine. We also have pencil. Yes, thank you, pencil. Uh, a wooden pencil kind of inspired by the carpenter pencil. It feels really different than the average stylus. I sometimes find it like tied up in my hair because I forget that it's actually a digital stylus and what we shipped in September that I'll deep dive a bit on is Mix. And I'll show you a little video before I talk about the process. So that's Mix. It's an open collaborative platform where people can create together. And the reason why we built Mix is that a lot of people think they can't draw. So they download our app and they buy our stylus and they get in there and it's awesome for five minutes and then they're like, wow, this is too hard. I don't think I can draw. And they, they leave it aside, which is really sad because everyone can draw. And I think it's just about giving people the right starting points templates and tools to get people started. I think the blank canvas is really intimidating. So we built Mix, which gives people starting points. Um, they can find someone else's drawing, draw on top of it, even if it's just coloring it in, uh, and share it back to the community, and then someone else can evolve their story. So some of the principles before we went into this design process for Mix is uh, making together, it's really fun to make things together and to meet people in the community that are also making things. Not starting from scratch, so giving people templates and other people's drawings. You don't need to have drawing skills and you don't need to be an artist. Which is great because I'm none, I'm none of those things and um, I think just playing around in mix has kind of exercised my creativity. So to get into the nuts and bolts of some of the problems, our first question was, where should Mix live in the app? Um, we have a very kind of simple app with a journal metaphor, so it was kind of hard to build an entire collaborative platform into it. 
Before Mix, we had a Made With Paper stream, which was placed to the right of the journals. And the Made With Paper stream is a community curated, um, community curated stream where our curators pick the best stuff and put it in there to kind of inspire people to see awesome things every time they go into paper. So we're like, great, problem solved. Mix will go there and replace the Made With Paper stream. But when we actually uh, did some research and looked at our support forums, we found out that people actually didn't like the Made With Paper stream because it was intrusive into their private journal space and they weren't able to control it. So we went back to the drawing board. Another thing with uh, that design solution is that most of our users have dozens of journals and we're running out of horizontal space in the app. Um, so that wasn't a great solution either. But like New York real estate, instead of building horizontally, <laughs> we built vertically and we built Mix on top, on top of the journals as a second floor. Internally, we called it the duplex view. And some of the goals for that was, of course, quick access. Um, mix is always a swipe away. A clear distinction between the public and private space. We also think, like, Mix only has a couple of streams right now, but maybe in the future we'll do some exciting things and offer more collaboration and there might be more streams, so we want it to be scalable. And we want it to play around with new gestural interactions because that's what we love to do at 53 and that's why our users uh, keep coming back. So it all starts with lots of conversations, uh, discussions around our desks and on a whiteboard. And of course, we do use our app to do brainstorming. Um, and at this point, design and engineer, while we all kind of intermingled and sitting next to each other, we're just sitting around the app and sketching out, like, how would this work? And here's just an example of us um, sketching one of the interactions, like, wouldn't it be fun if Mix was on top and then we could start playing around with the two spaces, like swiping these pages up into the public space. Once we got some sketches and some conversations going, usually a couple hours later, um, one of us is in sketch and we're mapping out like how that would actually work. We also, um, we love sketch and we love to print things out at 53. So we'll do stuff like figuring out what all the different views are, taking it from a paper sketch to a real wireframe, and then zooming out and figuring out how it works with the entire ecosystem and the website, and then printing it out and standing around. And it just, it's kind of like not really standing around. Of course, we're critiquing our work and trying and understand it, but it's another opportunity to invite our engineering team back into the conversation and say, hey, remember that sketch we were talking about a couple hours ago? Um, this is how it would actually work. What do you think? Then the fun part, which I think is unique to 53, and it might be because a couple of our designers have uh, backgrounds in film and a really deep appreciation for attention to detail, but we get into the visuals and the motion design with After Effects, Photoshop, sometimes Keynote. And this is actually a motion study. Um, it looks almost like the real app, so someone, sometimes we get asked, like, why do you guys recreate the app in a motion study? Is it really worth it? And I think the, question, the answer to that question is, it is really worth it because this is where we get to explore some of those deep design details, like here we did this entire motion study just to look at the transition of the background behind um, a dark private space and transitioning up to a light, more public mixed space. Then we get into prototyping and we do this um, again to understand how this is actually going to be built, to keep having great conversations with our team and to test with users. We use JavaScript because uh, it's quick and it's fast and we built our own little system to deploy it onto everyone's iPads really quickly so you can go from an idea in the morning uh, to a prototype a couple hours later. And some of the ideas that we kind of ask ourselves while we're prototyping 
is, yes, we care about the details, um, and yes, we want to look at different interactions, but stepping back, like, how do we maintain and expand paper's navigation uh, while we keep the app still really, really simple? How do we make sure it's still the paper that everyone loves to use? And how do we inject as much delight into the various interactions? And here's an example of one of our Java prototypes. A little bit less attention to detail, but just kind of looking at these fun interactions and how they feel, how it actually feels to swipe up into Mix and share your drawings. And again, um, we're putting this in front of our engineers, and they're not necessarily reusing the code, um, but they are excited because they understand it more. It makes for a great spec. And I think also some of the values can be reused and some of the conversations about gesture ambiguity can be solved in the prototype. Then we put it in front of our beta testers. Uh, when we were doing Mix, something really important for our team was to get it in front of the community. So we had 60 people sign up for our beta program. And every month we would pick eight or 10, not always the same people, because we didn't want to annoy them, um, and ask them questions. We would send them prototypes. We would do Google Hangout interviews. Um, and that prototype that I just showed you was a good one to send to our users and just kind of ask them, first of all, did you even discover Mix? Did you discover that there was an entire uh, new floor to the app? Um, and getting that type of feedback is really good validation. I think you get to kind of work out some of the problems, but rebuilding an entire floor into the app was a significant engineering effort. So I think we, we wanted the validation and the confirmation that this was a good idea before we spent months of engineering time. Then we get into the fun stuff, um, actually building and tuning. Our engineers are doing this in C++ and OpenGL, yes. Oh, you didn't like that. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah our engineers, months, months of coding, and the reason why they kind of wanted validation, well, the entire team wanted validation because we're small and we can't really afford to spend months spinning in circles, but when we were building the mix view and adding the second layer, if you think about the way paper is built now, it's a very um, physical metaphor of a journal, and it's very linear. I open my journal, and then I draw, and if I want to close my journal, I pinch out, and the journal is closed. So it's one way forward and one way back. And when we built Mix, suddenly you can go from your journal view to your stream view to the canvas view back to the journal view. So we had to refactor the entire thing and make it feel, make it feel really seamless and beautiful in all these transitions, which means um, thinking about persisting state. And my favorite part, about the end part of the process um, is designers coming back to the final product and using the HUD, which is this heads-up display, where we can start to tune just those really fine details. Um, I think the engineering team built this for the design team because they were tired of us back backseat designing. Like, could you make it a little bigger, a little smaller, just one pixel more, one pixel less? So this is something that an engineer put together in a couple of hours and probably saved the entire team um, months of hardship because now we can download the build, go into the HUD, find these little levers and fine tune ourselves and then just give them the values at the end. So it's a pretty efficient process. And then we bug bash. There's a very big culture of bug bashing at 53 and using the product. A lot of us are very active mix users, getting better at drawing every day. Um, and every Friday after our company meeting, one of the engineers had the great idea to get us together into a room with a beer and use the product. So everyone is either bug bashing the latest updates or they're just drawing and remixing and using the product and finding things that could work better. And we're just having these design engineering conversations on a weekly basis over beer.
which is awesome, and donuts. Um, so I'm just going to show you kind of the final result, a little bit more around the transition of journals moving up to the duplex view. So that's uh, our design process at 53 and how we built Mix. Thank you very much, Paul. So uh, I think the question on everyone's mind is, so where do we get the free pencil? Did you bring those with you? I do have one pencil in my bag. <laughs> um, I shouldn't have said that. You're going to get mobbed afterwards. And it, it's... It's a pencil that I've used and carried around in my hair, but I am happy to give it away to the first person that would like it. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I'm not Thank sure you. if that's like a, a good or a bad thing, but I do have a pencil and I'm happy to show it. One's better than none. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, so, a question for Paula. Start over here. Right. Was there ever any thought of, of integration between the platforms or of adding something like that? Or was it meant to be a little more true to pencil paper drawing? That's a great question. Um, glad you brought that up. So the original vision behind paper was just for the average, non-creative, non-artistic person to be able to draw digitally and visually communicate kind of like the Microsoft Office for the person who wants to express an idea. Um, so it was really simple and meant to just kind of mimic real pencil and paper. And what happened was, which was a great, unexpected, wonderful, lovely thing, which is why we're still here today, is that a lot of designers and artists started using paper and making these blow your mind out of this world types of drawings when we had always thought it might just be more about diagramming and communication, it actually became this beautiful artistic tool. And it is, it is something we hear often, it is a challenge um, for some people who want to do more with paper. But we kind of put that limitation there on purpose because we think when you're thinking and in the creative, squiggly, mushy process of design and ideating, that it's good to like not be blocked by all these layers. Like just be free form, just get your idea out there. And then once it's there, then take it into Photoshop or PowerPoint or Keynote or whatever it is that you need to do your job and make it, refine it, polish it, structure it. But we do actually have integration into Adobe now, so you can export your creative mumbo jumbo and get it into Adobe and polish it there. That's another great question. We were just uh, talking to some users today to figure out, to understand a little bit more about their workflow. And not a lot of people have iPads and bring them into meetings. You're like, great, so you're gonna be in this meeting, you're gonna be designing and ideating and communicating and visual, com yeah, they're like, oh yeah, great, but I don't have an iPad or I don't bring my iPad to work or I'm the only person at work or in my, club meeting or group meeting with an iPad. So I think there are a lot of challenges there. Um, we do have a website for Mix, which makes it a little bit easier so someone else can pull up the drawing on the web. Um, but it is a real 
it is a real challenge, so I sympathize and empathize. Um, I think we're thinking about other platforms as well, kind of expanding the reach because we want to get creativity into everyone's hands. But um, I think it's okay to start small and then uh, year by year kind of move forward and grow. Hi, we're, we're hidden back so you probably won't see us. Oh. We didn't oh. see you the entire presentation, that's, that's okay. Um, Tim from Pipe, we're here on the fourth floor. Um, it was strange looking at the, at the process and having like the prototyping kind of uh, really late in the process. Um, doing animations before prototyping and that's kind of having design prototypes to validate the idea, but rather, and testing it with users in that phase, but rather, you know, going deep into animation and then JavaScript and then beta testers and then prototyping it uh, kind of later on. So what are your thoughts on that? That's another, oh, this is oh, another great question. Um, I think what was missing in my process diagram was time. <laughs> I think the first four steps, like converse and sketch, wireframe, visual design, motion, and prototyping are all happening like really quickly, like in the first three or four days of thinking about the project. So it'll start with a sketch and the next day someone will be in motion and then the next day someone will be prototyping. So they're all kind of it's linear, but it all it happens very quickly, and then it quickly branches off into everyone kind of working in their expertise and coming back together. And then the largest part at the end is the, the building process. So we try and do all of this validation really early on and really quickly. And even though the, the, the pretty line um, made it look like it's an extremely linear process, it, it actually wasn't. There was like lots of squiggles in the background, but they were light, so. Um, so I would, I would say I can totally relate with kind of that question and we try to do, even though prototyping happens technically after the discussion or after visuals, that might just be a day or two later once the project kicks off. Uh, one more. Hi, uh, Patrick Miller again, from the marketer. If you have a, I think you said you have a one-to-one -one, uh, designer to dev ratio, right? We do. And, and at the same time, the Devs, the engineering is the you kind of heard it as like the big part at the end. Right? For for this project, yeah, uh, it was. I got it. Yeah, yeah. It's like I'm wondering, you know, we we have a you know fewer designers to dev ratio, okay? and I'm wondering, are the designers always like ahead, thinking ahead, you know, much more visionary kind of thing? Is that why you have so many designers, or what's the how does that work? I guess. I think yeah, it's a great it's a great question. Um, I think the designers take on a lot of roles, kind of like the content creators, the marketing and sales people, partnership, product decisions, planning. So even though it might, yeah, it, I think we're, we are trying and be ahead, of course, but we're also very much in the day-to-day -day mucky details. It's actually quite a challenge to like jump around from challenge to detail, um, vision to details, to vision to details, but we try and do it. But I think the reason why we're kind of split up that way is because we just wanted more of a direct connection with the engineering team, and a lot of the designers just wanted to take on new things and have lots of awesome talents, like also copywriter, and also used to be an engineer, and also content marketer, yeah. All right, Paula, thank you so much.